All right, welcome back to another video on agriculture. Today, tackling von Thunen and landscape manipulation. Such a fun and interesting, it's not. It's, it's honestly, I'm gonna be real with you guys. This is boring, but it is theory that we gotta know, we gotta get through it because it can be um, applied to, when we talk about urban development, it can be applied to real life examples. Um, so it's a theory you gotta know um as it, boring as it is so we'll try and get through this as fast as possible remember before we start anything uh make sure to like subscribe hit the bell make sure you get the notifications for new videos leave a comment and be ready for more content from bear's guide to a five all right moving on now so to start von thunen to even talk about it doing this math problem is probably the best way of understanding the concept without being told the concept. We all know that different types of agriculture need different amounts of space. And we also understand that some things are easier to transport than others. So things that are more difficult to transport are obviously going to be more expensive. So what von Thunen came up with is that the farms that don't need as much land and have expensive things to transport should be closer to the village versus things that need a lot of land and are very cheap to transport. They should be the furthest away. I know this is a groundbreaking revelation to have. Now, obviously, this is before modern transportation, this is before refrigeration, this is before globalization, blah, 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 blah. But this really mattered, and we still see it today when we look at the structure of farms in relation to cities and where we put them. So we answered a couple of questions. We applied the actual types of agriculture to each farm, and now we start to understand this concept of von Thunen. And von Thunen follows this thing called the bid-rent curve. It's a very confusing chart. Uh, there's lines everywhere. We got dots. We got words. We got... It, it's confusing. All you have to essentially know is that the further away you get from the city, the amount of land you can buy goes up because the cost goes down, right? It's the same thing in urban areas. We're just using this with agriculture. We know living in a downtown area is going to be tremendously expensive and it's going to be a small place versus moving out to the suburbs where houses get bigger, land gets bigger for the same amount of money or even less money than um, living inside the city. So we're just using the same concept that you guys understand, common sense stuff. We're just using it for agriculture because we know there's intensive agriculture that doesn't require a lot of space and there's extensive agriculture that does require a lot of space. Now looking at this example of von Thunen, he uses concentric rings around the central node. We know that the node being the city, right outside the city, you have dairy and horticulture, things that are perishable, you know, your fruits, your vegetables, your, your milk, cheese, so on and so forth. Around that, you're going to have forestry. Um, I mean, the main way of building homes and buildings and everything was wood, and trees are heavy, so you kind of need it to be close. Um, after that, the next three rings, the, the beige, the yellow, the green, um, these are all just crop rotation, whether it be wheat, barley, rice, oats, um, whatever it may be, whatever staple grain to fuel uh, the city with a lot of calories to keep them going. And then finally, we have grazing on the outside because we remember that it's very cheap to move cows because cows have legs and can walk themselves. So it makes it real easy for trying to do that. Now, we look at our poorly um, shown picture, very hard to see, but essentially we're gonna lay von Thunen out over the United States using the Northeast as our population center. And if you look at it, it still kind of applies at a national level. We know that the Midwest is known for growing wheat, corn, and soybeans, and if we follow von Thunen, it's doing that. Um, we know that dairy farming is in the north and northeast, and it shows that. Uh, we also know that beef and cattle come from out west, where it's more arid. So we can still use von Thunen. We can still see it in real life, and we see some remnants of it. But here's the thing to remember. Von Thunen is only a theory. Everything has to be perfect. The land has to be flat. There can't be a river or a mountain. And we're still taking into the account that we're stuck in the 1800s. What you really have to take from von Thunen is that where we place our farms is based on how much land do they need and the cost of transportation. So we know how we place farms, but how do we organize the land? College Board says you have to understand three ways. And you can see all three of these in the United States. Meets and bounds, townships and sections, and the French long lot system. 
I wouldn't get too hung up on these. This is not going to be a major question. This is not going to be something that you have to write an FRQ on and it's going to be all this and you have to freak out and like I have to explain only townships and sections. No. This is going to be in reference to agriculture, how we develop cities, so on and so forth. So the first one being meets and bounds. Basically, we're looking at a specific map using landmarks to draw distances. Our townships and sections is when you have huge amounts of land. You're seeing this throughout the Midwest where we're going to split up land into six mile wide and long plots, and then we're going to divide them into square mile sections. And then each section is going to have 640 acres in that. And it's just a way of dividing the flat land that's easy to um, split up, very von Thunen inspired. And then you get the French long lot system, which is long thin strips of land, but every single farm has access to water, say like in the Mississippi, for example, where we did have the French colonists there. And they established all these farms, not only for the water for irrigation to the farms, but also for the farmers to use that as a way of transporting their crops down the river. Now, before I continue on with any pictures, make sure you've already hit that like button and subscribe to Bears Guide 205. All right, back to what we need to do. So here's a picture of Meats and Bounds survey. Ooh, very interesting, very uh, compelling drawing. Here is the township and range section. I know, riveting stuff here, folks. And then finally, we got the long lot system, where you have these long, thin farms uh, all touching the river. Great. Now we can move on to talking about landscape. Now, of course, Von Thunen predicted that all landscapes are perfect in this theory, and we know that's just not true, right? So say you're farming on the side of a mountain. Very difficult thing. Let's terrace it. We're going to create flat surfaces on the mountain. This is great. It collects rainwater better, obviously, instead of just sliding down the mountain. Um, you can plant a whole lot more crops, and it stops soil erosion. But if it's not maintained, you get mudslides and people die. This is what some of our terraces look like. Now remember, this also isn't stuck to just East Asia and rice farming. We see this in North Africa with Mediterranean-style agriculture. We see this in South America with some grain agriculture with potatoes and corn. Essentially, it's taking this idea wherever there is a mountainous terrain and making it happen. All right, then we get to irrigation. Irrigation, you've talked about this before, I'm sure, in some class. It's just taking water from one place and moving it to another through, you know, digging holes or using pumps or aqueducts. Uh, we have seen civilization change it. In the top right corner, we have uh, basically Mesopotamian early irrigation. In the bottom left, we have the Roman aqueducts that are moving water from one place to another on an incline. And then finally, we get modern day irrigation. And there are problems with irrigation. We get salinization of water where minerals come up. We get, um, you know, the fact that we're taking water out of the ground. The ground has nothing to be on top of and the soil can collapse. So we got to be careful with how we alter the landscape to make sure it doesn't bite us in the end, but we can also use it to, you know, accomplish our major goal of agriculture. Another way we can terraform or change the land is through draining wetlands, which is great to do because once you drain all the water out of this wetlands using irrigation techniques, you have immensely fertile soil to use and grow crops and feed people, increase the carrying capacity, that's great. But we're also destroying a complex ecosystem that is what we have learned later is vital to keeping the health of different species, whether they be plants or animals. And then finally, our last one is deforestation, clearing of trees to create flat farmland. We saw this in shifting cultivation, but in shifting cultivation, it's not a permanent clearing of trees because they eventually come back. This would take, this would be like in Brazil where they clear out and create pastures for animals for ranching. Um, a lot of this is occurring in Southeast Asia, parts of Africa, obviously the Brazilian rainforest. But the scary part is that once you clear out all those trees and once the grass has been eaten, it can lead to desertification where you've literally created a desert and you don't have to be a genius to understand by getting rid of trees, you get rid of the thing that absorbs carbon dioxide. So um, after that, here's an FRQ you can do if you want to pause the video and take a shot at completing the Von Thunen FRQ from 2007. The rubric is included. Uh, you can see here in part A, pretty straightforward. And finally, we see part C to this FRQ. Now, remember, von Thunen is just a theory. We're using a theory to apply it to real life concepts. 
And the thing is, you're going to see a lot of theories coming up this semester, so it's important to make sure that you know these and how to apply them. As always, this is Bear's Guide 205, uh, another installment of Agriculture PowerPoint. Make sure, once again, that you have liked, subscribed, hit the bell icon, and leave a comment for me. And we'll see you next time. See.